This episode of the Sloopcast is brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company is an Ohio-based company where they usually say our seasoning will take your barbecue from good to great. Great seasoning such as the Smoked, the Kerry Steak, the Discord, and the Mad Hatter, and much, much more at themadcanadianbbq.com. That is the Mad Canadian bbq.com i personally just bought three of those i won't yes. say which three yes by using the promo code one year two zero that is one spelled out o-n-e-y-e-a-r two zero at checkout for 20 percent off that's right 20 percent off this entire month by using one spelled out year 20 at checkout be sure to check out med canadian in Cary, Ohio, across from the fire department on North and Patterson this Friday, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. or Saturday, 12 p.m. to 4 p.m. at the Cary Ace Hardware. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where he has your butt covered. What's up, YouTube? Cheers. Cheers. What you drinking? Not this. <laughs> I got a cool beans by Jack Yeo's. Well, that's cool. It's a coffee ale. It's pretty gotcha. good. I'm still drinking my Oktoberfest. Yeah, I had just never seen this Jackie's before, so I, I I picked it up. Uh, speaking of Jackie's, they're coming to Columbus. So. <laughs> <laughs> Sup, Jackie? <laughs> we heard you're coming to Columbus. Need a place to stay? <laughs> we can hook you up. Need a need a place to advertise? You're uh <laughs> We're fans. We are fans. That's that's right from me to you, Jackie. I know there's no one there named Jackie, but it's a lot funnier if I personify it. <laughs> Alright, let's let's rejoin the audio listeners. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing pretty well. How are you, Jared? Uh, you know, I, I don't think I have any complaints at the moment. We're getting closer to Ohio State football. Um, Two weeks. Yeah. Um, I This weekend is a little bittersweet because I think like October 10th. October 10 was like the thing we were rallying behind for such a long time. October 10, October 10, October 10. And then like, okay, maybe October 17. Okay. October 17, October, you know, 10 or 17, 10 or 17. Then it was like 24th. <sighs> Fine. Fine. <laughs> Fine. As long as it gets us in position for the playoffs. Mm -hmm. That's fine, I guess. <laughs> yeah. But no lighter. No lighter. <laughs> no. All right, Jared, we got we got a few things to talk about today. We do. We're going to talk about some Buckeye updates, some Q&A. Uh, we're going to do our slew picks. We actually got a guest listener emailing us for this week, so we're going to go over that. I like you. I like how you say "actually" as if we didn't just have one person forget the sentence. And well, it's only been one person, Kyle. It feels like forever. Uh, it, it, and it, then, it does. And then we'll finish up with some ask Sloopcast questions. So let's go off to the top here. Buckeye updates. Uh, Buckeyes have been practicing, like I mentioned, two weeks left. We got under 15 days as we're, this is being released, under 15 days that uh, Buckeyes will be, yeah, actually will be in Columbus. I had to think about the <laughs> first game where they yes. were going to play at. But yes, it is in Columbus against Nebraska. At noon. At noon. With Gus Johnson. Gus effing Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> all right jared yeah uh some questions here for you yeah this is not the ask sloopcast section this is just kyle asking me questions ask jared uh yeah. all right uh one of the things we've mentioned about over the couple past couple weeks and i think especially last week uh, about the quarterbacks in case 
the worst w- were to happen with fields yeah. injury or getting the virus. We talked about who's going to be that next person. Who's going to be that QB two here. Yeah. Uh, so tell me a little bit of what you've heard about with the freshman quarterbacks. Okay. So first and foremost, especially if it's early in the season, I still expect it to be Gunnar Hoke, especially if it's early in the season. Um, but maybe I really, even then, I think that if, if, if fields has to leave for a play or two or a drive or two, I still think it's going to be Gunnar Hoke. Uh, if there's going to be a longer quarterback outage, maybe spanning weeks, then maybe you get one of the freshmen ready. But for right now, it's, I think it's still Gunnar Hoke. But between the freshmen, which I think is what you were actually asking me, um, mm-hmm. it does look like CJ Stroud is starting to separate himself a bit. Uh, he did come in uh, slightly higher touted than Miller did. But even with that into consideration, CJ Stroud has really come in and impressed. And there seems to be some separation there. Hmm, interesting. Separation from CJ Stroud. Yeah, uh, and that's not a knock on Jack Miller. Uh, you know, as we all know, the plan is for neither of them to see any meaningful snaps this year. Uh, underline under meaningful, of course. Mm-hmm. And a year from now, who knows what the situation is, but looking at things right now, it does look like C.J. Stroud is pulling ahead a bit. All right, cool. Sticking with freshmen here. Um, but the freshman wide receivers here, what have you been hearing about these talented receivers that we've been gushing about yeah. since, since like a year ago, <laughs> essentially. So, so first and foremost, I want to say that all four of them are incredibly talented. So we are, uh, what's the, what's the phrase I'm looking for here? Nitpicking, I suppose. Mm-hmm. Um, so for, they all look great. So I just want to get that out of the way right now. I am going to highlight two people in particular. Don't take that as bad news about the other two. So I just want to get that out there. Uh, right now, it does look like a Smith Ninjimba and G. Scott Jr. Uh, are separating themselves a little bit. Maybe even Smith Ninjimba more so. Sort of maybe even being slightly above G. Scott at this time. But I think that's it's basically what we're seeing right now. Um, I think that we see at least three of them get some pretty decent snap counts this year. Uh, Mookie Cooper, maybe not so much simply because of the position he plays and Mm -hmm. being a bit behind, uh, not playing his senior year. So that that plays in with Mookie Cooper. But let's let's. Let's not forget too about who's ahead of them too, Olave and Wilson. Yeah, how much, yeah. How much meaningful time are these receivers going to get in? Are they going to see Ohio just a State, handful plays each? Ohio or? State likes to rotate their wide receivers. I uh, until we see that change, we just keep assuming that's the case. Mm-hmm. You know that that's the truth until it's not anymore. I mean, how and, many? I, I mean, on average, how many receivers are you going to see on the field? I mean. After all, this is 2020. It is the year of the tight end. <laughs> uh, that's a good point, Kyle. I, I do think that you will see three wide receivers on the field most of the time. Three wide receivers on the field at least most of the time. Mm-hmm. I think you're going to see a one running back, one tight end, three wide receiver set as probably your, your base set would be my assumption. Mm-hmm. All right, cool. All right. Any updates on Haskell Garrett? Yeah, uh, Haskell Garrett, uh, I guess maybe in case anyone's unaware, um, was involved in a, a shooting. Uh, and before anyone makes any assumptions about that, it, it, by all accounts, he was a, a good guy responding to a domestic situation that had nothing to do with him. So... Don't don't take that the wrong way about him doing stuff he shouldn't be doing or even putting himself in positions he shouldn't be in. He was he was by all accounts and everything I've heard um, that he was 
You know, I, I know a lot of people just sort of dip out during the summer, then come back in at this time. So I know a lot of you already know this, but just, just throwing that out there that this was actually something in favor of his character and not against it. So I just want to go ahead and throw that out there first. Um, <clears throat> there is optimism that he'll play this year. Uh, probably not. I, I would, I would say definitely not week one. I wouldn't expect to see him week one. He is practicing right now. Uh, by the way, when I say he was shot, let's, let's not mince words. He was shot in the face. Um, so let's, let's just, <laughs> and, and it was say, like in and out too. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. And it, I mean, <sighs> now nah, I'm not going to say that because even though it was, yeah, I'm just not going to say that, but the point is, is that he is practicing. He has a helmet on, which if you've been shot in the face, I think being willing to wear a helmet is probably a, a really great step forward in your in your progress. Uh, again, I, I, there is optimism within Ohio State right now that we will see um, that we will see Garrett play this year, but not right away. And that's that's probably a good thing as the defensive tackles um, are well, maybe more so, uh, specifically the three tech defensive tackles are probably a pretty big question mark heading into this year. Um, there's a lot of talent there. There's a lot of depth there. Uh, there without Haskell Garrett in the mix, there really might not be a, a solid number one guy there right now. Uh, mm -hmm. that doesn't, you know, we have a couple more weeks of camp. That doesn't mean someone can't step up. That doesn't, you know, yada, yada, yada. But you know, if, if we're again, the defensive line's great. And, but if we're nitpicking, you know, we're, you know, slightly concerned about the three tech defensive tackle, slightly concerned. All right. Yeah. It's amazing what a year, what a year made when yeah. last year we said, Oh, this might be the best defensive tackle group we've ever had. And now here we are one year later. And now we're concerned about who's number one. Well, I mean, we were saying the same thing about the corners last year versus the corners this year. Mm hmm. Sean Wade went from the absolute number three to the absolute number one because you had two corners go in the first round last year. And just imagine had Sean Wade left. Yeah. Yep. All right. Um, speaking of defensive tackles, uh, Tywon Malone, uh, who we've talked about in the past here, seemed like a, a reasonable shot for Ohio State yeah. to to pull in here. So he yeah, loses uh, his top he six. He is a class of 2001 defensive tackle from New Jersey. 21. what I say? One. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Unless I heard wrong, but... Uh, so he releases his top six, and he's left out the Buckeyes. Yeah. So what's the deal with that? Yeah, uh, last time we talked about, when we haven't talked, we haven't done like a solid wall-to-wall -wall recruiting episode in a while. But the last time we talked about Tywin Malone, we talked about Ohio State being not a shoe-in by any means, but probably the the number one team, even if it was by a slight margin. So in the couple months since we've had a serious recruiting episode, Tywin Malone went from you know, favoring Ohio state, even if it was by a little bit to Ohio state, no longer in the top six. And I, I think the one line explanation here is that he's also a baseball player, which is a thing we knew he wanted to play. He wanted, I almost said basketball. He wanted to play baseball in college, which was a thing we knew, but I think maybe a thing we didn't know, or at least maybe underestimated at the time or maybe his own personal mind has changed. I'm not 100% sure. Is, baseball is probably, or I guess is a higher priority for him than at least Kyle and I were, were saying at the time. Okay. Um, any updates on our, your favorite position, the slobs here? What have you heard for the O-line battles? Yeah, uh, no real surprise here. The 
five offensive linemen. Uh, you can basically go ahead and say Munford, Miller, Myers, Davis. Th- those are your, from left to right, that's your left tackle, left guard, center, right guard. That's set in stone. That's absolutely what's happening. And you can also probably feel really, really good that MPF is your right tackle. That you can feel pretty good about that. That's not set in stone the way the other four are set in stone. Mm-hmm. But if you had to put money on it, that that's that's your guy right there. That that's NPF. Uh, you can't completely roll out Dewan Jones. I think he's in that conversation. I think it's a possibility that he ends up winning that spot. It's not a good possibility, (laughs) but it's a possibility. Uh, He's still involved in that battle. And for that matter, and I think it would probably take an injury to make this happen, and he might work his way into the two deep. Don't completely count out. And it's it's, it's wild to say this. He's a freshman. Do not completely 100% count out Paris Johnson Jr. More on him here shortly. Yeah. Now that being said, you can like 99% count him out. It'll be either NPF or Dewan Jones. Again, Mm -hmm. uh, unless there's any injuries, Uh, Thayer Munford, since we're talking about offensive line injuries, it's, it's very much worth noting. You know, he had a lot of back problems uh, that he is looking really good, that he's moving well, that he seems to be at, at full health right now. So, mm-hmm. you know, we're talking potential injuries along the offensive line. It's definitely worth noting that uh, Thayer Munford is is looking and moving really good right now. Mm-hmm. For those who don't know, NPF is Nicholas petit Fury. Yeah. I think I nailed that one. Uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, how's, how's the quarterback corner back battle? Yeah, uh, we were just sort of talking about how that went from the strength of the team to maybe maybe the biggest weakness or maybe just the secondary in general, just based purely on who they lost, which for anyone playing at home was everybody. Mm -hmm. Uh, Well, anyone out of the four anyway, uh, obviously Sean Wade returns. So Sean Wade returns. He's your CB one. Now, obviously there's, there's no doubt there. So now you have, uh, Seven Banks and Cam Brown as your primary uh, participants in the cornerback two battle. And it does look like Seven Banks is currently winning that. Uh, that being said, you're still going to see mo- you're you're still going to see both of them on the field. There's going to be a lot of rotation there. Both guys are going to see the field. But for right now, you know, if you're if you're battling for the number of snaps or the honor of starting that does uh, appear to be leaning seven banks way at the moment. Uh, I guess ba- the, the one sentence explanation of that is just that maybe he's a little bit more technically sound right now. All right. Sounds good. All right. We got some black stripes. Yes. Um, right before we, <laughs> Right before we recorded, Ohio State decides to come out late Wednesday of two black stripes to be removed. And that is, just mentioned him a minute ago, Paris Johnson Jr. and defensive back Cameron Martinez. Yeah, in fact, those hit so... Um... Those, those hit so short before we started recording just now that I just checked my phone to make sure there wasn't a third one. Like that's that that's how recently that happened in our timeline. But yeah, uh, like I said, Paris Johnson Jr. Uh, that appears to be a a slam dunk recruit so far. That you know, surprising no one. I think we all knew that, but of course not all recruits work out all the time and but but it does look like uh the hype is real around paris johnson jr uh if we see you know we'll see thayer munford probably leave you know no no one has to leave this year that's worth repeating a lot of people don't uh have not maybe picked up on this yet no one's losing eligibility this year no one's any every single player can come back so 
theoretically every single Buckeye can come back. Uh, but you will see a good host, uh, a good number of Buckeyes leave. <laughs> Um, just because that's what Buckeyes do. They, you know, we rent them more, more than anything else. All right. Any other news that you like to bring up before we go into the slope picks? Now, I, words? now I think we should, I think we should hit up the slope picks. Uh, looking at the timestamp, I think, uh, we'll probably have to yep. stop halfway here and, and do an ad read in the slope picks, which we don't necessarily like doing, but that's just where we are from a timing perspective right yeah. now. All right, let's let's go into it here. Uh, first game here, Jared, of our seven games? Do we have it's seven? always seven. Always seven. One, two, three, four, always five, seven. six, seven. You are right. Seven. Seven. <laughs> it's it's literally built into the website. I can't choose any I mean, at the beginning of the season, I could have made it as many as I wanted it. But once mm -hmm. it's locked in, it's locked in. It'll always be seven. All right, cool. All right, first up, Virginia Tech heading on over to Chapel Hill. Take on the Tar Heels. North Carolina is a five and a half point favorite. Who do you have, Jared? Um, in, a, in a game like this, I, I feel like both of these teams are pretty big question marks. Uh, North Carolina does not feel like the eighth best team in the country to me right now. I think they have a lot of talent. And of course the numbers are skewed because there aren't any PAC 12 teams in the rankings and not many big 10 teams in the rankings. But I, I Jared, do. We don't talk about rankings. We, I was talking about them in the aspect of them not being correct. <laughs> so that's permissible. Uh, so basically I'm going to go with the underdog in this game simply because I don't feel like I have a great grip on which one of these teams is actually better. Uh, therefore I'm just going to pick the underdog. Yeah. My, my thoughts exactly. Five and a half is a little too much for me. Uh, I think North Carolina will end up winning it, but I'll take, I'll take Virginia tech to cover. I am so 50 50 on who wins this game. Mm -hmm. That it's just like, I don't care if it was minus mm -hmm. one and a half points. All right. We have the Red River. Red, 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 yep. Red, nope. The just, Red just, just don't. River just, rivalry. There you go. Texas and Oklahoma. Oklahoma is a two and a half point favorite, even though losing their last two games and three of their last four. Uh, three of their last three against actual fbs teams yes that too but oklahoma is a two and a half point favorite in this rivalry yeah uh i i think both of these teams are walking disasters right now i mean are they not if anything i'd say texas looks better but i does that mean texas looks good because I, I don't think that they do um I was honestly surprised to see Oklahoma favored here. So me being surprised to see Oklahoma favored should probably tell you that I am going to in fact take Texas. Yeah. I'm curious though, what the, what the over under is on this. Uh, the over under is wow. Take the, wait, no, nope, never mind. <laughs> the over under is set like at 65, 66. That feels low. We don't real life gamble or do ever as an unders on this show, but <laughs> that but. feels low. Mm -hmm. So, so I, I got Oklahoma to cover. I just, oh, okay. two, two and a half, two and a half is just pretty much a pick them to me. I mean, that's a field goal. Yeah, it's less than a field goal. Important, mm -hmm. most importantly, less it's than not, a field goal. It's not three and a half. Yeah, <laughs> I'll, I'll take Oklahoma here. I'll take Oklahoma. All right, we at least have a difference this week, unlike last week. So we got that going for us. All right, cool. Let's see if we can keep on rolling here. Uh, next up, we got Florida taking on Texas A and M. The Gators, Jared, are a six and a half point favorite. And Jared. Florida is going to cover that easily. Give me Florida. 
I think you're forgetting how terrible Florida's defense is. I think you forget how terrible Texas A&M is. Now, I, here's the thing, and I think this this is playing into, because I'm seeing on our website, uh, that the vast majority of the people are picking Florida. Not, not within our Sloopcast group, but just across all of CBS, mm-hmm. which is the website we do our pick'ems through. And I think that that's a bit skewed because Texas A&M looks bad because they've played Alabama. Florida looks good because they haven't played Alabama. I think is basically what that boils down to. And I think that's pushed that number. Well, I can I can use that logic in favor of me too. Because Texas A&M did play Alabama and showed me how bad they are. <laughs> That's my reason to pick Florida. Yeah, but I mean, I the fun. I'm talking like I'm about to disagree with you, and I'm I'm not. I'm also going to pick Florida, but <laughs> I what I disagree with is sort of your certainty. <laughs> it's it's not your choice. I disagree with. It's your level of certainty that I well, disagree. That's with. all we're deciding is the choice. Doesn't matter if you're. If this was like. If let me ask you this, just entertain me here for a second. What if it was nine and a half? Florida. Yeah, see, I would flip the Texas A and M at that point. Okay. Now ten and a half. <laughs> <laughs> that Porton touchdown and field goal right there. All right. Uh so we both pick Florida. Uh all right, we can keep going here. Uh oh, Jared, we need yeah. to talk about our oh! picker. Crap. No wow. wonder we're moving so quick. No wonder why. All right, let's backtrack here. Virginia Tech, uh, North Carolina. Is... North Carolina is a five and a half favorite. This is Jason, by the way. This is Jason. Thank you, Jason. Uh, he says here, we like the Hokies here. We? Uh, it's, <laughs> a ro- it's a royal we. I mean, he started mm-hmm. his email with howdy, so obviously he's of the aristocracy. Okay. UNC came out flat after their early hiatus. I like I like Tech and what they're doing this year. And as dogs, they win this one outright on the road. You see, yeah. All right. Uh, next one here is Texas and Oklahoma, where Oklahoma is two and a half. Old friend Alex Grinch couldn't call a defense in 2018, <laughs> made Rondell Moore a household name in Columbus. Yeah. He still can't call a defense, but no way nope. Lincoln Riley loses three straight. He did two FBS teams. <laughs> yeah. He kind of already Dicker, has. Dicker the kicker misses the game tying attempt as time expires and Sooners cover the number. There you go. He, he's he's with you on that all important field goal. Two and a half as opposed to three and a half. Yep. Uh, the Florida Texas A&M game. He says Kyle Trask versus Kyle Field. Both are hyped. Both are overhyped. Florida's one dimensional offense running Mm. through the tight ends couldn't put away the game cocks and cover tighter game here, but Aggies cover. See, he's a little bit closer. He's a little bit closer to me. All right. That's fine. I I have to highly disagree with Trask being overhyped. I've found myself watching a few Florida games this year. I think that dude's for real. I like Kyle Trask a lot. All right, and I do we're... like their I do like their receivers too. And their and their tight end. Uh, mm-hmm. His name's also Kyle. There's a lot of it's, it's Kyle throwing to Kyle at Kyle Field this weekend, and uh, Kyle thinks that the team with the Kyles is going to win. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. All right, we can keep going here. Texas. Uh, why, te- why don't we go ahead, go ahead and do the let's go ahead and do the ad read. We're right at thirty minutes according to my clock. All right. Well. All right. Let's hear it from the Mad Canadian, Jared. What do you have over there? Do you want to choose? Just randomly pick one. Uh, I said randomly. <laughs> you you can't say randomly after I'd already been looking for five seconds. Okay. 
Uh, let's see. I grabbed this one. This is the S and P bud. This is one of the ones I just uh, got more of because, as you can see, it's 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 pretty low. Um, one of, I I kind of tripped on this. I think during last week's episode, um, maybe it was last. Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, potato cheat code. Mm-hmm. Potato cheat code. Whatever you're doing with your potatoes, doesn't matter what you're doing with your potatoes. The S and P bud. That's that's your way to go. Uh, let's see. I'm drinking a coffee beer right now, so let's talk about a coffee barbecue seasoning. That's the coffee and Q. Uh, that's chili powder, maple sugar, paprika, ground coffee, and additional spices. Uh, the coffee in the coffee and Q, by the way, is by Iron Bean Coffee, which is a veteran run, uh, coffee brewer in, I'm just going to say Northern Ohio. Cause I forget specifically where Perry, Perry, Ohio. Kai, you want to Google that for me? And by the way, and if Iron Bean Coffee wants to sponsor the podcast, just let me know. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and I've been eating a lot of the Kerry steak recently. I don't have it over here because it, cause it's in the kitchen because I was using it. Um, but I've been doing uh, some uh, potatoes and some sweet potatoes and some carrots in the air fryer. Uh, and then having like some some diced beef and just sort of having that is, as a lunch and or a dinner. And I, it's all coated in Kerry steak and it's, it's really very good. That's it. Perry's a bird. Perrysburg. I was halfway there. Almost. Be sure to use the promo code one year 20 one spelled out year two zero for 20% off your entire order. When you head on over to the mad can eating bbq.com. All right, Kyle, let's get, uh, let's get back into the picks. We were at Texas A&M and Iowa state. Uh, that would be Texas tech and Iowa state. That yes, that would be the correct thing to say. <laughs> Iowa State is a twelve and a half point favorite. So, this was the one I had the most problems with. Um, I I I struggled on this one to to come up with an answer. So I'm curious to hear what you have to say before I pick. Hmm, interesting. Because I didn't have any issues with this one. <laughs> interesting. You, you went you went straight head forward into this is what you're telling me I did yes <laughs> uh I got the boys well they're actually they're both red <laughs> uh I got the red Raiders okay I got the red Raiders to cover Iowa State still wins but close yeah uh as as do I I think Iowa State I like them a lot I think they've bounced back incredibly well after losing to was it one of the louisiana schools i forget was it the it was either uh louisiana lafayette. monroe or lafayette i forget which which sunbelt team they lost to but they lost to a sunbelt team um but they've looked good since then they've picked up two wins one of them against oklahoma 12 and a half just feels like a lot considering they've yet to win a game by anywhere near that much so far this year so that just feels like a lot. Uh, shout out to our Mount Union boys over in Iowa State right now. Uh, but 12 and a half just feels like a lot. I I agree with Kyle. I think they win, but I, I'm just not willing to put 12 and a half points on it. All right. All right. And our good friend Jason says, Raiders running into a Cyclone team due for a letdown. Doubt they can pull off a W, but no chance Iowa State locks the back door. We all agree. Moving on. Tennessee heading on over to Georgia. Yeah, should be Georgia. I don't think this is a neutral site, but uh, the Bulldogs, Jared, the Bulldogs here are a 13 and a half point favorite. Who do you have here? So I, we, we saw Clemson I, and, I, and I, I don't want to use the word struggle. I think we saw Clemson just be a bit flat last week against the clearly inferior team. You know, they scored when they felt like they had to, it was a team 
uh, lacking a bit of motivation at times, which is just what happens when you're Clemson playing in the ACC. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like there's going to be a lack of motivation this time around. I think that the numbers Miami's been putting up King We're talking about Georgia and Tennessee here. Wow. <laughs> I'm like, where are you going with this, Jared? <laughs> uh, that's enough beer for me tonight. <laughs> Georgia and Tennessee. Yeah, uh, I've gone back and forth on Georgia a lot. Um, I, I thought that they were good. Then I thought they were bad. Then I thought they were really bad. Then I Now I think they're good again. Uh, so I, I've not nailed down Georgia so far. Uh, that being said, I do feel like I know who Tennessee is, which is that they're, they're Tennessee. Uh, they're a middle of the road SEC East team. And I think the number pretty accurately reflects that because even if Georgia is a bit of a question mark at quarterback right now, they still are a vastly, vastly talent, more talented team just based off of recruiting and the defense is insane. Um, 13 and a half is a number that's too big for me to be comfortable with, but I'm going to roll with anyway. I don't feel great about that number. I wish it was a tad bit lower, but I'm, I'm still going to go with it. Uh, so Georgia to win and cover. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I feel, feel very similar to you. Uh, I just, just like every year with Tennessee, I just don't have any confidence Yeah, in Tennessee. Uh, made our apologies with Georgia in last week in last episode here. Yeah. So we'll just, we'll stick with Georgia one more week here or not one more, but we'll stick with Georgia this week and um, pick them to cover here. Okay. Jason says here, I like the hottest team in football. The volunteer get points. Georgia's offense has too many questions, and this feels like a game Tennessee circled early. So he's taking Tennessee. Hmm. All I, right. I, yeah, I mean, that's that's interesting. Uh, he's obviously higher on Tennessee than, than you and I are. Mm -hmm. And as far as Georgia goes... Say what you want to say about their quarterback and their offense. Uh, I've, I've said it myself, but I think that's a damn fine defense they have. Yes. Yeah. Speaking of good defenses, Jared. <laughs> Miami taking on Clemson. Yo, I have so much to say about this. <laughs> In fact, I can't wait. <laughs> Clemson is a 14, not 13 and a half, but 14 and a half point favorite. Yeah. As I'll I was you, saying, I'll let you start, Jared. As I <laughs> or was, continue. As I was saying, <laughs> um, Clemson, like I said, sort of slept walk through last week's game. They're not going to do that this time. They've seen the numbers Miami's putting up. They see what King is capable of. This isn't a game that Clemson sleepwalks through. They're they're going to go into this one both eyes forward. If you're looking for Clemson to stumble, maybe look at next week. As a, as a game that maybe they're not quite up for in, you know, let's, let's remember that Clemsoning is losing the week after a big game, not losing the big game. That's Oklahoma ing. No, that's losing against the team that. That's, is, uh, that's Kansas state. Or... That's unranked. <laughs> um, no, I, it was a crazy stat. Like, losing to a team that they're favored by more than 24 against or something crazy like that. Oklahoma has done that an insane number of times the past few years moving forward. Uh, I, I like Clemson to show up big in this game. Um, this is the type of game, like I said, that they're not going to sleepwalk through. They're going to show up and look like the national champions that they are capable of being in this game and I think that they remind, this is a lot like Ohio State playing Penn State. Is Penn State a good team? Yeah, Penn State's a good team. Are they on Ohio State's level? No, sir, they are not. This is like Ohio State playing Michigan or Penn State. It's a very good team against an elite team. And even if that 
very good team feels really hot right now. They just aren't at the talent level yet. Let me ask you this, Jared. If it was set to 11 and a half. I'm still picking Clemson. I'm picking Clemson at 14 and a half. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's say 19 and a half. Clemson. 22 and a half? Miami. Okay. I probably draw the line at, at 21. Or, well, 20 and a half. It's probably where I would draw the line on this game. Interesting. Yeah, this this is the one I had the toughest. I think 14 and a half is that. That number, that's, I think that's a really good number to me. Oh, I thought you were going to say something. Uh. <laughs> I wanted, I wanted to, but I didn't, I interrupt you too much and I'm trying not to. But you're good. You're good. If you want to say something, go ahead. <laughs> uh, but no, this is, I just, I went back and forth with this one. I really like Miami. They have a, they have a, pretty solid team here they're I, uh, they're quick they yeah. got some really good athletes here yeah i think that they could really really test clemson out here yeah and see if they really are the championship caliber team that we think that they should be uh i know that miami just steamed roll florida state last week but i think florida state's not a great team Florida State also struggled to beat Jacksonville State last week. Yeah. Uh, I'm just going to pick Miami to cover. I think that's just, yeah. that's, that's tough. I, I think Clemson wins easily, but like, I, sh- I guess I shouldn't say easily, but they they win comfortably, but no no more than two touchdowns, which is right there. Yeah. That's that half point there. I think there's a lot of Ohio State fans out there that want to per who we because we did it all last year. We did, yeah. Where Clemson never looked good last year. They, and it's not necessarily their fault because they didn't because the ACC was horrendous last year. Mm-hmm. So we never saw them tested, and it was really, really easy to negate the good things they did and point at the games in which they didn't show up the most motivated and say, see, see, they're not any good. They're not any good. Mm-hmm. The fact of the matter is, is that they are. They're a very yeah. good team, even if they don't show it every week. Mm-hmm. I just don't see this being a game in which they don't show up with complete focus and motivation. Yeah, and, and King... Yeah. King's playing really well right now. Against two, though. Who has Miami played? True. True, I'm, but We, we all got really excited about Miami because they torched, humiliated Florida State. Mm-hmm. But then Florida State proceeded to the next week. They were, was it 21-14 at half for Florida State against Jacksonville State last week? Like, I mean, but you could say the same with Clemson, though. No, 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 no. It's Jacksonville State. They're a FCS team. I understand, though, Jared, but everybody has, I should say everybody, but you see teams from time to time that they just, they just lay an egg for one reason or another, though. But they were down 14 to nothing against Jacksonville State. This is next level bad for Florida State right now. This isn't losing to a Sun Belt team. This isn't losing to North Dakota State, who's one of the absolute best uh, FCS schools. This isn't even Michigan losing to Appy State, who was one of the best at the time FCS schools. Mm-hmm. Jacksonville State's a good FCS school. Don't get me wrong; they're not they're not a bad FCS school, but it's still an FCS school. Yeah. I understand what you're getting, but yeah, Florida State's a bad team. But then look at look at the teams that Clemson's played too, and you can't you can't compare saying, oh, Clemson's played a so far a better schedule when they played the Citadel. They played the Citadel. I this I, year. I understand that they they have uh, an absolute cupcake win, but we also saw Florida State beat Ohio State last year. 
or excuse me, we saw Clemson beat Ohio State yeah. last year. We I, saw I we saw basically the same squad of players mm-hmm. win the national championship a year before. We know yeah. who these guys are. Mm-hmm. We know they have one of the best two or three, or probably the best quarterback in the country. We know what Clemson is. Yeah, we I, don't know what Miami is be, because the only evidence we have are basically them knocking off Florida State, who turns out to actually be terrible. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's that's fair. That's fair. But I'm going to go off of what I've seen so far. But you you're right to look at it that end. I'm just going to look at it at a different end here. <laughs> and so far from what we've seen with King, he's. Looked yeah. really well so like, far, and so I far, like he's him. looked he's looked really well. He's passing efficiently. He hasn't really turned the ball over. Yeah, I mean, I think he'll he'll give Clemson um, a run for their money here. I I don't think no matter how good he's looked, I don't think he can completely carry the team. No, I I still think Clemson will. Like I yeah. mentioned before, Clemson's going to win this easily but it's not going to be more than more than 14 15 points there um yeah jason jason says here i like the hurricanes to cover they familiarize themselves with prime time and brent venables didn't have his september cupcakes to get his defense humming the canes quick receivers could give the tiger secondary fits and have big plays to keep them close. Yeah. Uh, real real quick, Jason, if you're listening to this, and I'll also email you, uh, we do need, and Kyle, because I forgot to ask him, and that's my fault. Just want to point that out. That is my fault. Um, do we know if, if Jason's in the online thing? I can't tell right off him. Um, yeah, he is. Never mind. So we can go ahead and say it. Uh, Kyle, this is the game in which we have to pick a over under a, uh, a total score. All right. You want to go or do you want me to? I'll, I'll say it. Okay. Uh, I have it set at 70. Ah, mine is a touchdown for me. I got 63. Okay. Uh, let's see. We have one more game to go. One more. Ha ha. Florida State. Florida State and Notre Dame. Notre Dame's a 21 and a half point favorite. I want to say that the only reason I even picked this game as a game to be picked is because I didn't, I, I've been trying to spread them out across the day. Mm -hmm. And this was the only other primetime game that I thought was even kind of worth talking about. So there's that. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> there's that uh let's see so florida state as we just talked about pretty bad notre mm-hmm. dame pretty good okay, I, what ma- okay. Well, hold, on, hold, on, hold on what makes you say notre dame's pretty good i think they have a good talent and when i say pretty good i want to really because i think you're tr- gonna try and like nail me on something here they're really good in that they are in the group of the second tier of the ACC. Okay. Right now I have them on even standing with Miami and North Carolina as teams that are pretty good in the ACC right now, but are still in my opinion, way, way behind Clemson. Okay. So if if I said before that Miami is Penn State, Notre Dame's Michigan. A very good team that, and by the way, the Notre Dame-Michigan comparison works on a few different levels. Yes, I'm thinking of a few. <laughs> but they're a really good team that's not an elite team. It's, it's like James Franklin himself said when Ohio State had that comeback win over Penn State. He goes, mm-hmm. we're very good. They're elite and that's what it is. Notre yeah. Dame is very good. It's a very good football team. This is a top 15. Mm-hmm. I don't even think you could dispute that this year, this is a top 15 football yeah. program. They're yeah. not top five the way they're currently ranked, 
but they're a top 15 team. They're a very mm-hmm. good team that could potentially backdoor their way into the playoff. Maybe, maybe, maybe I, 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 that fourth spot is wide open in my head. So sure. Maybe it's a possibility. Right. So who you got here? Do you have Notre Dame twenty one and a half or yeah. Florida State to cover? I, I got I got Notre Dame to win and cover simply because I think absolutely nothing of Florida State right now. Absolutely dog shit nothing of Florida State right now. It's real, real bad in Tallahassee. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I got Florida State to cover here. It's a big just, number. It is a big number. It, it just mainly because I, a lot of it has to do with me thinking highly of Miami. Miami. And that's what, and that's why. Miami. Um, oh, okay. I see what you're doing. Never mind. I'll shut up. <laughs> that's why I thought highly of Miami and my um, pick to have them cover Clemson is because they, they're just that much better and I just still don't really know a ton about Notre Dame. Yes, they're a really good team, as you mentioned, though. But they squeaked out a win against Duke, who's not a good football team this year, too. And then they played USF. Not really a good football team no. this year. So I I don't know. Maybe maybe this new the new quarterback here, Florida State, might might um, spark some new things here and give Notre Dame an early run for their money, but Notre Dame pulls out late, but 21 and a half is just, it's too much for me. Too yeah. much. I think there's just a, a really big talent gap here and that that really big talent gap favors Notre Dame by a lot. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, the talent gap is there, but 21 and a half is still. It's a, it's, it's a bit much. I'd feel way better if it was at least, like, if it was at like 17 I was going to say about 17 and a half. Yeah. Um, but I, like I said, I have complete and utter no respect for Florida state mm-hmm. right now. Yeah. All right. Jason here says, don't care how many points you want. You want me to lay Florida state is a train wreck. Thank Notre you, Dame Jason. Could be the fourth team in the playoff. Irish Ooh. roll. Irish roll. Jason, he... you, you and I were not on the same page on a couple of those picks, but I, but I feel like you could easily accuse me. And I didn't. All I do is copy and paste the email into our show notes. I don't read it at all. You and I are basically twins on that prediction. <laughs> and then he puts in here, 7-0, and oh, here we come. Uh, you know, good luck to you, my buddy. Good <laughs> luck to you. All right, that's it for the Sloop Picks. All right, we had some, we had some differences this week. Who, who, who are our differences? Uh, let's see. We both had Virginia Tech. Both had Virginia Tech. I took Texas. You took Oklahoma. Yep. I took, we both took Florida. Yep. Did we both take Texas Tech? I picked Texas Tech. Okay. So we both took Texas Tech. Uh, we both picked Georgia. Mm Mm-hmm. But Jason did not. Yep. Um, I picked Clemson. You picked Miami. Mm Mm-hmm. I picked Notre Dame. You picked Florida State. So... What, that's... Three differences. Just, yeah, just three. Mm-hmm. It's still almost half. Yeah, yeah, no, I just thought it was four for a second. That's mm-hmm. all. All right, Kyle, uh, let's try to lightning round our Ask Sloopcast questions. All right, Jared. I can't answer this first one because I don't know if I've really had one, but what is, what's the best beer in Canada? Asks Duncan. I... Th- you know, early in my drinking life, I would drink a Labatt's. Um, it's sort of fallen. You may have, because I know I had them at the apartment, like the first apartment we lived together in. Um, if, you, if you remember that place, um, I think I had some Labatt's around. I, I can't swear. I can't swear one way or the other that you drank any of them, but I know I had them around. Um, so probably that's the only one I ever drank with any regularity. Uh, but not one I'd probably ever drink again. I, I can't say that I've drank a ton of Canadian beers, but I'll go Labatt's. Okay. All right. Next question from Duncan. Last year, the preseason dialogue was, what if Justin Fields isn't that good? And what if Ryan Day isn't Urban Meyer? 
Is it what if Rutgers screws us all and the season falls apart again? And what if one of the dozen running backs isn't good enough? Or is there a more glaring, unnecessary concern for a fan base that just needs the season to start so we can collectively stop worrying so much? I'm personally not worrying. I, I think mm. if if you're looking for something to worry about, um, what I think you were saying about Rutgers, what if Rutgers screws us and the season falls apart again? I think what you're saying is is like, what if COVID screws us over? And you just sort of picked out Rutgers and being that being on the East coast and them maybe just not giving that much of a shit about their football season and maybe acting irresponsibly and other factors. Uh, Rutgers feels like a team that could be a COVID hotspot out of all the others. Um, I think that's the biggest concern is that if too many of Ohio state's games get canceled, that maybe they aren't put into serious consideration for the playoffs. I, I think that is probably the biggest concern. Mm -hmm. I think that's, that's probably the biggest concern. Yeah. That, that's I, cause I just, I think even if Ohio state loses to Penn state close, they could still make the playoffs. And by the way, I think if Penn state loses to Ohio state close, Penn State could still make the playoffs. That fourth spot, I said it before about Notre Dame. I'll say it again about Penn State. That fourth spot in my mind is wide open. The Pac-12 are only playing eight games, or excuse me, seven games. So they can't screw up. They can't stumble. The Big 12, all of their hopes are on Oklahoma State right now, and I just don't see it. There's a fourth spot open. May it be Notre Dame, may it be Florida, Georgia, North Carolina, that, that fourth Miami, that fourth spot's pretty wide open right now. Yep. All right. Um, next up we have Sun Card. Sun Card asks us if you could make one realistic change to the 2018 season, what would that change be? Uh, the entire defensive coaching staff. Yes. <laughs> I, don't, <laughs> I don't know if that's a realistic change or not. Um, uh, don't lose to Purdue. Well, and hold on. Not Larry Johnson. I think that goes without saying. But when I say the entire defensive coaching staff, not Larry Johnson. That yes. goes without saying, but I'll say it anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're really looking for realistic uh, maybe just one change, which would probably be maybe Alex Grinch or the linebackers coach whose name I'm forgetting. And probably, I, you know, I don't care that I've forgotten it. Um, it no, Kyle, for God's sakes, do not look him up. The <laughs> I saw you sort of lean back and go for the keyboard. Uh, but yeah, I would, if, if, if the entire defensive coaching staff minus Larry Johnson isn't a realistic change, then maybe just Alex Grinch or maybe just the linebackers coach who's again, name I'm forgetting. You know what it should be? What's that? I'm drawing a blank on his name. Um, uh, help me out here. Help me out. Uh, defensive coach Cincinnati. The current defensive coordinator in Cincinnati? Is he a coordinator? The defensive coordinator, the former Ohio State linebacker, and I've caught Freeman. Your... Yes. Freeman. Freeman. Mar Marcus Freeman. They Hire tried. Freeman. They tried. I know. They tried. People were like, <laughs> why didn't they hire Marcus Freeman? They tried. Mm -hmm. uh, they tried again when uh, when Ryan Day took over and reshaped the defensive coaching staff. They tried. Yeah. He's the heir apparent in Cincinnati. When Fickle moves on to a better job, Marcus Freeman will become the head coach. There's no reason to become a coordinator mm -hmm. at Ohio State just yep. so you can gain when, enough steam to then become the head coach when, at Cincinnati when you basically are already... He yeah. could... If, if when, Fickle had gotten a job, he could have <laughs> been the coordinator at, at Cincinnati right now. <laughs> Michigan State. Uh, that, that made too much sense. <laughs> it does. It makes way too much sense. All right. I like this question here from Austin. Austin asked, if you were Ryan Day, Jared, yeah, 
How would you spend the last two Saturdays before Buckeye football? Film. There's only one question. There's only one answer to that. Film. And I believe somebody in our Discord already uh, had the answer here. Duncan says, Woody would tell you to prep for tea time. There you go. Uh, that's... <laughs> you don't have as much more. Well, I mean, if he's has the Urban Meyer mentality, he's been prepping all year. Yeah. Uh, you, I'd be watching Clemson games, I'll tell you that much. Mm-hmm. But ra- the fact is, probably recruiting making calls, doing all that stuff. He's recruiting. Uh, they spent last Saturday morning at the horseshoe practicing. All right. One more question from Austin or two more, really. If you could change one thing about Buckeye football program at large, what would it be? Uh, screw the big 10. <laughs> yes. That's, that's not realistic, yeah, but this, you didn't this, say realistic. This, this, this part is brought to you by no your enemy <laughs> and and the fire kevin warren commission yes <laughs> uh i mean that's that's a good one jared that's a good one you know what another one would be and i don't really care for and i might get some heat for this okay oh kyle's coming with a hot take hot ca- I, hot take coming three i don't care i two, don't care for the one for the uh quick cows quick cows oh no 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 one's no one's gonna give you no one's gonna give you shit for that no one likes the quick cows i don't like the quick cows get rid of it yeah no one likes the quick cows all right um favorite favorite in stadium beverage and food combo uh it's all bad (laughs) to me to me i'm not a big person of like having a drink and food with me at a at an Ohio State game yeah I, I I just don't I'm just there because I'm there I'm using my hands I'm cheering you know yeah. me I'm a very I'm a animated very energetic person uh very animated when I'm um when I'm at games though but if it is I'd rather have something quick to eat so I guess maybe a a dog and and a coke or something like that yeah like I, I love like nachos but I do at too. an Ohio State game, the cheese is stone frickin' cold mm-hmm. by the time you get even a quarter of the way through it. Yeah. Um, so I just I just don't on the food. I'll, mm-hmm. I'll sometimes get like a Coke Zero um, simply maybe, because maybe the last so- time I was at a game, they didn't have beer available throughout the yeah. wide stadium yet. I think they were still just doing it for the box seats. Um, Mm. So I, I and I primarily do that for the souvenir mm. cup. Yeah. Just, just a Coke or something just to wet in the throat after yelling so much. And And the souvenir (laughs) cup. Yes. Got to have the souvenir souvenir cup. cup. Yeah. All right. Uh, Sun card. What is one football related event that is on your bucket list? National championship. All right. Uh, (laughs) Yes. Yes. I mean, just actually be there for one, especially if it was in Jera world. Kind of want to see Jera world before I die. Mm-hmm. There's, there's plenty of places I'd like to go. Um, National championship in Jera world would be pretty great. Yes. Uh, Mad Canadian asks pork rinds or pork cracklings pass. Yeah. But pick one, Jared. No, Jared. No, pick one. No, Jared. No, Jared. No, Jared, no. <laughs> look in my eyes. Pick one. No. <laughs> That's disgusting. You know, you know what? I'm going to pick one because you asked the question, Mad Canadian. And yeah. I'm going to earn some brownie points here. So <laughs> um, I'm going to pick pork rinds. All right. I'm going to turn this back around to Mad Canadian. Mad Canadian, if you were making, you said pork rinds, mm-hmm. which one of your own seasonings are you putting on it? All right. I expect a 100 word essay. All right, cool. One more question from Sun Card. What is one f- food that even if you were allergic to, you would still eat? I d- like that depends on how allergic. <laughs> I like one of my uh one of my favorite like online video game guys uh goes by uh Cracked Game or no, um 
I can't believe I'm, I'm blanking on it. Uh, Crank gameplays. Uh, he's deathly allergic to peanuts. I think he said like one 64th of a peanut would kill him. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think it depends upon how allergic you are. Like I am lactose intolerant and I do eat ice cream. I just can't eat a lot of ice cream because mm-hmm. I, I won't die. I, I will just have a really bad night. Uh, and I'll, 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 I'll stop. I'll stop the description at that point. <laughs> yes. Please. Um, so I, I guess I still do ice cream, even though I'm lactose intolerant, but I don't think lactose intolerant is the same thing as having a food yeah. allergy. Yeah, correct. One food that if, if I were allergic to, uh, you know how expensive EpiPens are? No food's mm-hmm. worth that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Um, pizza. <laughs> I'd still what, eat pizza. What specifically are you allergic to, though? The cheese. So you just get some soy cheese. Okay. I, look, there, there's ways around things. We have mm-hmm. all sorts of things that are actually other things. Uh, quick, quick question here from Mad Canadian. Is it possible to have a Buckeye game party and not have Buckeye chocolates to eat? I assume he means the peanut butter and chocolate Buckeyes Mm -hmm. that Kyle's mom makes the absolute best version of. I want to point out Mm -hmm. this is a fact. Say hi to your mom. Hi mom. Okay. Kyle's mom makes the absolute best Buckeyes. Uh, uh, I mean, can you have a Buckeye party? Yes. Does it suck? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, That's, that's the answer right there. You can, but it's going to suck. Yeah. All right, last question here. Duncan, ignoring how scary the movie actually was, who's your most frightening, scary movie character? I'll be upfront. I don't really have a favorite uh, scary movie character because I'm not a big fan of scary movies. So I'll kind of let Jared answer this one. Yeah, I'm actually the same. I don't I don't necessarily have have one. Sorry, that's a crap answer. <laughs> It is. I know. I can't. I really don't know any good. Uh, any you know good what? Ones. You know what? Uh, Hannibal Lecter. I'm going to go with Hannibal Lecter from the Silence of the Lambs series. Hmm. That's a good one. That's a good one. I don't know. Maybe, maybe Jack from The Shining. Hmm. That's a good one. Okay. All right. I'll stick with that one then. Yeah. All right. All right. That is, that is all Jared. That is it. All right. We're not even that far over. Uh, let's see what to go ahead and let everyone know, uh, to please check out the master link. Um, support us on Patreon would be huge. Um, if we get like two people this weekend, that would be great. That's it. Just two. So like you and a buddy, that's, that's really all we're looking for. Uh, two people, to, to sign up, even if it's just the $3 tier, uh, you get access to the discord server. You get early access to episodes, especially these Friday episodes. You get, you get really nice early access on these. And, um, by the, like the mad Canadian just shared a coupon code to the discord people. Uh, that's insanely generous. Uh, so you, if you, Buy Mad Canadian stuff. You might make your money back on coupon codes alone, especially for the month of October for is, is how long this coupon code is lasting. Uh, let's see. Uh, check out our, und- oh, so you can find that in the master link. You can also find our t-shirt stores. Uh, one is the uh, Buckeye Sloopcast store, which has Buckeye Sloopcast merch. Kyle, show off your Buckeye Sloopcast merch. Well, I don't think you can get this one anymore. Yeah, you can. Okay, cool. This is one of our OGs. Yeah, it is. Well, it was on the Teespring store, but I just ported it over to the T Public store, which is our Beer, new... music podcast. Yeah, that's that's a that's one of our OGs right there. Uh, and then there's also the seventy seventy one store. If you're not someone who necessarily wants to wear, um, like podcast merchandise, which I get, uh, the seventy seventy one store has. Um, a lot of generally sports themed. This is a, I, this is a frictional fan of uh, sports franchise I made up called the Dayton Force. 
uh, that's a that's a picture of a stealth drone right there. That's pretty cool. Um, just a fictional Dayton sports team I made up. And that's a bunch of just sort of weird Ohio stuff you can find over in the T Public page, the 7071 T Public page. And again, you can find those links uh, down in the master link, which is down in the show notes. And I think that's all the talking I feel like doing. Kyle, what do you have in Kyle's corner? Mm, one thing that I found here and found out today as we were recording here, Jared, Dwayne Haskins getting benched. Not yeah. just getting benched, just down, down all the way to the bottom of the quarterback chain there. Which is absurd. Uh, the Washington in general is is bad right now and to put all of that on Haskins is is wrong uh by just just generally speaking wrong his stats were not even bad um if you compared him to a lot of the other young quarterbacks around the league his stats were pretty in line with other guys who aren't getting benched other guys who are also talented but also playing on terrible teams. It is just terrible. He, he has such a terrible offensive line. Yeah. Having no, no time to throw, just, just put in a terrible, terrible position and pretty much making him try to do the impossible at that um, organization. Yeah. And it, it's, it's dumpster it's, fire right now from the top down. I mean, they, they might be taking the team away from Dan Snyder. The team doesn't even have a name right now. It's the football team. That entire organization's a shit show. That's is basically what it boils down to. Mm-hmm. Wow. How about this, Jared? Something new? Governor of Florida has given clearance for full capacity gains oh boy. in Florida. That feels early <laughs> if i'm being honest uh but that's uh, that's all i'm gonna go into that right now uh, i know ohio just got clear I, ohio i think just lifted restrictions on bars and restaurants and i think the nfl the pro teams i think were given clearance i want to say something small like 12, 14,000 people, I think, can go to a Bengals game, mm-hmm. uh, something like that. Uh, so relatively small, uh, but the Big Ten's going to do what the Big Ten does. So don't don't expect that to just automatically translate to Ohio State because it won't. The Big Ten's going to try and keep it even across the board, which because of like Maryland and Rutgers and Northwestern uh, will probably mean zero for a while yet. All right, Kyle, anything else in Kyle's corner? I think that is all. Awesome. Oh, Tony Gerdeman says Damari McCall is back at practice. Oh, there you go. That's a last second breaking news for us. From Tony G. <laughs> uh, it's a couple days old for Tony you guys. G. I just call him the Gerd or the Gerd. The Goat. The Gerd Goat? Goaty Gerdeman? Goaty Gerdeman. All right, now you're just wasting time. (laughs) Isn't that what we do here? (laughs) All right, tonight's ending music uh, will be brought to you by a band called The Crooked Spines. Uh, You can check out uh, more information on them. Uh, There's a link down in the doobly-doo that will send you probably to their band camp page and tell you whatever song it is of theirs I'm about to choose. Uh, so you can check out the crooked spines. Uh, you can check out all their links down in the info and you can find out what the name of the song is. Cause I haven't picked that yet. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course support your local podcasters. Once again, this is the crooked spines. What's up, YouTube? How is it going? What's that? I'm glad we're recording. Why is that?
because I don't have to listen to the debate. <laughs> and cut Done. on that conversation. Done. <laughs> That's as political as we're getting. Maybe too much. I think the general disdain for debates is is fair play. Mm -hmm. As long as you don't go any deeper than that, I think we're fine. That's not what we're here for. Jackie O's, by the way, again, in case Jackie O's is listening, come sponsor the podcast. They're coming to Columbus. I'm so excited about that. Um, Last time you were this excited for for a beer coming to Columbus was when we were in college when Yingling <laughs> yeah, came to Columbus. What a weird time that was. Uh, mm. <laughs> I mean, we already obviously already get Jackie O's in Columbus. They're just down in Athens. But we're going to have an actual tap room in Columbus now on 4th Street. I'm so happy. Yes. I am so, so happy. It sucks that it kind of came at the... Um, it came at the demise of Elevator yep. Brewing. That that stinks. Elevator Brewing was already for sale. Um, I was kind of hoping that someone was going to buy them and keep Elevator going, um, which I don't imagine is what Jackie O's is going to do, unless maybe they keep the Elevator name around for a second brand. I don't know. Um, but I, I, I don't think we have details on that yet, but it does look like Jackie O's is moving into the old elevator space on 4th Street, including uh, the, the brewing facility and the tap room. And I'm, I'm really excited about that. It's going to be right. It's, it's, it's just like the next block down from Wolf's Rage. And longtime listeners know that we're big fans of Wolf's Rage on this podcast, even if they aren't currently paying us. And uh, I, I'm going to move the 4th Street, I think is what it boils down to. I think I need to find an apartment on 4th Street. Or a condo, something. Nice brown box. I don't know. All right, that's enough beer talk. Let's uh, rejoin the listeners. Would once again like to thank the Crooked Spines for ending today's show. And of course, thank the Mad Canadian for sponsoring today's show. Mad Canadian is our homie, is basically what it boils down to. Um, He's given us uh, some cool promo codes in the Discord uh, to get us some extra special deals. That's an added benefit of being a Patreon slash Discord member. Uh, we already talked about the coffee and queue. I don't want to talk about that one again. Um, by the way, uh, one year 20, that's O-N-E year two zero, uh, will get you 20% off your entire order. That promo code only lasts through October. That only lasts through October. Uh, we'll have Sloopcast 10 back once we get into November. But if you want to get that 20% off, you need to act this month. Uh, so I grabbed the Sonoran Heat. Uh, that is a great do-it-all spice right there, much like the S&P Butter, the Smoked. Um, if you have, if you want to get like a trio of incredibly versatile spices, that's that's your that's your versatile trio right there. Um, and if you want to meet the Mad Canadian and make sure to tell him the Sloopcast sent you, cool dude. Uh, he has his barbecue bus, and it'll it's it's scarlet and it's gray. You won't miss it if you're in Cary, Ohio, um, this Friday. And depending upon when you're listening to this, that might be difficult. Uh, from 11 to 3 in Cary, Ohio, um, the corner of North and Patterson, which is right across from the fire department. And then on Saturday, which it feels like a little bit more likely uh, if you're listening to this, uh, from noon to 4 at the Ace Hardware in Cary, Ohio. So if you find yourself in or near or traveling through Cary, Ohio uh, this weekend, make sure to go check out the Mad Canadian. Make sure to tell them the Sloopcast sent you. And uh, tug on his beard because I hear it's good luck. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where that came from. And that one's just for the mad Canadian to make him laugh. That's all that one was for. Uh, but even if his beard doesn't, his beard only has him covered. That's the line. The beard only has his only has him covered, but his spices 
have you and my and Kyle's butts covered, the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where he has your butt covered. <laughs>